Devin, uh, obviously a big moment for you, you know, picking up the victory, first UFC win. G give me the idea, what's the, what's the emotion like right now? Uh, you know, I'm flying high. It was a super long layoff, 13 months. I uh, had surgery, didn't know if I'd be in the UFC still because the division's so big. Uh, just. I, I just kept training every single day, that's all I could do, and I kept tagging Dana White, Sean Shelby, the UFC, asking, begging, saying, give me another shot, I'll sit on the shelf, I'll take any short notice fight, and finally, they gave me one, 30 days notice, got the job done, I couldn't be more happy. Did you expect the fight to end that quickly? Uh, you know, I, I didn't. I thought that uh, I thought that it was gonna be the first time that he got drugged into, into deep waters, you know, because he, he finished his fights fast. Um, or he, you know, or he gets finished. Uh, his last two, he got choked, um, and I think everybody was expecting something on the ground, and it ended up being on the ground. But it was from me dropping him with body kicks. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, Devin, when we uh, spoke before, you mentioned uh, at one point that Sean Shelby had said, "No, oh, maybe we're not going to have a fight for you." Did you ever consider going to the regionals and asking for your release at any point? No, not at all. You know, I, I can't afford to take care of my family on local league money. Um, and I own my own mixed martial arts academy, and I absolutely love it. And I love teaching kids. I love teaching adults. I love training there. Um, and if it's not the big leagues, you know, I just I can't afford to live. So uh, I fought until I, until I was 100% certain that it wasn't going to be the case, and like I got cut off the roster or whatever. Then I'd maybe consider finding something like that. But UFC 100% what I want, what I worked for, and I fought for it, and I got it. Can you talk about the finish? I mean, obviously you hit him with the liver shot. He folds. And then, but you were pretty patient picking your shot. Okay, you want to throw some punches first, then you went back to the liver again. I mean, can you talk about kind of what you were seeing? And I don't know if I've ever seen back-to-back -back liver shots like that for a finish. Yeah, I like my left kick a lot. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things, it's like you're thrown into a whirlpool and it's like you're trying to swim to the edge. It's hard to focus on what's really happening. But I, I need to watch it again. But I'm, I'm pretty uh, certain my mindset was I landed one big kick after I landed a knee that I could hear. Um, I hit him with a knee to the body. I knew it hurt him because you can just tell. Um, so I went to the liver. I knew it hurt him again. And I was waiting to see if the hand came down to protect the body, and he didn't do it. So I went back to the liver. Um, otherwise, I would have gone upstairs with it, trying to take his head off. Is there something satisfying about a body shot? I mean, the guy kind of crumbles. It's, uh... Yeah, you know, it's one of my favorite kicks, and it, it feels good, you know. And you know when it when it goes across that body, right? And it's uh, it's good night, Irene. I got it. We, I hear this from fighters all the time, but can you explain why body shot knockouts are so fun? <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's just one of those things that you know they feel everything on it. I don't know if I still, I still got knuckle marks from him. He punched me right in like the xiphoid process or whatever you call it. And man, it hurt. It felt like he'd like rip my intestines out. So you get hit in the head and it's like, oh, it's terrible. But you don't really feel the pain like a body shot. Body shot, it's like your, your system shuts down and everything in your head that doesn't get rattled, it's like, holy shit. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, sorry for swearing. It's like stubbing your, your, uh, your shit on a coffee table you know it hurts and your brain tells you every bit of it so it's, it was kind of kind of a joke going in but I mean was there any part of you that was fearful of getting kicked in the growing tonight <laughs> <laughs> that, that man over there Joe Lozon uh, yeah I, uh, I wasn't thinking that at all I was just thinking keep my head from getting knocked off its shoulders because he can punch so so yeah. in that sense, did his level of aggressiveness actually like benefit you? The fact that he just came at you, you didn't really have to think about anything? You know, I, I do like when guys just want to fight me, you know. Uh, my first fight, I, I just didn't get any, uh, I didn't get off, you know. He, he just uh, kind of held on to me and had a good strategy, kind of just kind of waited and then just straight line and just kind of held me on the fence. And you know, it was my first one and I got my feet wet. The next one I kind of started opening up more and the third round was really where I came alive and now I feel like I'm, I'm really getting my, uh, knowing how to deal with being inside the octagon. But uh, I like when people will press because then I can just let it go and I don't have to sit and, and uh, kind of think too much, just go. So what's next for you? I know this is a quick win. Uh, it seems like you came out relatively unscathed. Are you looking at a you know, fight relatively soon? Yeah, you know, 13-month layoff was uh, a big layoff. Um, so it, it's definitely going to be good if I can get another one soon. My mom's never missed a fight except for when I've been in the UFC because she's had some crazy bad turbulence flying like over 20 years ago, so she won't fly anymore. So all I want to do is fight close enough to home that she could see one fight. So New York, Boston, Jersey, Pennsylvania, something like that I would love. Um, you had this feel-good story uh, this week too, giving two tickets away to a fan in need. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I wish I was in a position to give everybody tickets, and I'm not at all. Um, I gave one ticket to my father, one to a teammate, and then we had two that we wanted to give to fans that 
uh, had a good reason to go. Um, and there were some awesome ones, but there's a kid that messaged me saying that his dad had never seen a fight and he has stage four cancer. Um, so it was a no-brainer. We chose them, uh, you know, and I hope they have the best time of their lives. I hope the UFC somehow can do a little something for them. You know, I think they should, if they can check those tweets, I'm not very social media savvy, but if they can get these guys out back, meet some fighters, I think they should do that. But yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.